Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Usman Javed and this is a determinant structure analysis class. This lecture is a continuation of uh, lecture number 3 on Bayesian analysis. Previous lecture we discussed about Bayesian analysis. Bayesian analysis is a method of analyzing the information obtained from the observations of 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 the shear and moment diagrams for the frame frames how the shear and moment diagrams changes um, by changing the structural element so in um, in in case of frames you have a forces transforming from one other ele one element to section to the other section so uh, how how would we in how would be how would we incorporate this uh, into the our elements so thirdly the moment diagram constructed by the superposition method lastly the deflection curves so we have a beam which is uh, quite simply supported uh, it has a two sections uh, b and c upon which there is a udl acting upon it with a varying function of for w into x x is basically the length and there are the point loads f1 f2 and f3 and moment acts upon m1 m2 so uh, w for the w there is a x for this uh, small length you have a delta x at which the different uh, magnitude of a udl is acting upon it so we we'll take this section out and upon which the there is a function of a udl acting upon it and uh, the change in length or uh, width is just a delta x which is quite a small uh, length um, the component of uh, this udl would be as w of x into delta x and you would have internal forces acting as a shear moment on the left word shear moment and delta moment and delta v on the right word so you can calculate the value of a shear at this point um, by t simply taking a sigma f of y equals 0 so you would have a equation like this uh, you will sum the, uh, all the shears acting upon the both ends and you can calculate the delta v easily so delta v is basically the change of shear uh, change of shear when uh, there is change in the function of a udl so you can calculate the delta v easily by this equation but just by taking simply sigma f of y equals 0 taking the upward, um, upward forces as a positive you also can take the delta moment um, which is basically the increase or a decrease of a moment um, from very small uh, distance delta x from b to c so here's an equation you can calculate the delta delta m from this equation you have taken the moment as at zero uh, at zero for o point as a zero so there is a moment uh, component due to this force there is a moment component due to all these forces so you can calculate easily the uh, actual delta m so delta m would be as this so by dividing the delta um, by delta x and taking the limit from delta x to zero these equations would be um, dv over dx which is shear by the respect to x and uh, which is basically the slope of a shear force diagram uh, this is basically differential this differential is um, a slope of a diagram which would be equals to negative of a dist uh, uniformly distributed load so uh, if we take the the moment moment equation uh, derivative of moment equation with respect to x you will come up with the shear so if you take the shear uh, moment 
if we derivate the shear with respect to x we will have a intensity of a load if we derivate the moment equation with respect to x we would have a shear force so it is uh, basically it it basically tells about the for example you have a shear and moment uh, you can calculate the value of a shear and intensity of a load by derivating its shear uh, force and moment uh, equation very simply so this example was a, a complex case scenario or generic scenario for uh, any of a beam with a viewing load function with respect to x so uh, if we integrate if we integrate uh, the, the shear it would be as a uh, it would taken as uh, area under the distributed load loading diagram for example you have a shear equation you will integrate with respect to x x is basically the length of a member you will come up with the area under the distributed load if you integrate the moment you will come up with the area under the shear force diagram so um, by integrating or derivating the uh, shear and moment you will come up with the you if you have a complex case scenario or a complex case loading scenario you can derivate or integrate to come up with the real time values so in this case uh, the when the force f acting downward on the beam then the delta v would be negative because it's in uh, delta v is in downward direction delta v is basically the change in the shear value by the application of function of f uh, so in this case it is acting downward it is negative value so the delta v would be downward so it would taken as negative uh, if the f is upward the jump delta v would be upward obviously the delta v value would be positive in case of a moment if we take the counter clockwise moment as a positive value then delta moment would equals to m prime in case of any external couple moment is applied counter clockwise delta moment is positive so that basically this is a sign convention sign convention is what uh, uh, you can take the moment positive and negative whatever um, the convention you, are, you want to follow you can take the upward shear clockwise moment and rightward normal force as a positive or contrarily you can take the downward shear counter clockwise moment and leftward normal force or axial force as a positive whatever you want to take uh, you can have a similar results um, in your structure so for example here is here we have a um, a beam section with a load p which is acting upon it and we have a two uh, um, shear which is vl and vr so in this case the sh for the shear force diagram um, first the shear would increase sh shear would goes positive and uh, up to the vl and then it will go with a zero slope because there is no loading between the v this point between uh, vl and this point so now there is a zero slope over here and, and the point p which is loading uh, which is acting downward would create the downward impression onto the uh, shear force uh, diagram and it goes um, simply straight upward the vr because there is no loading still so vr would be zero the uh, shear end so there is a zero slope in case of a moment diagram you have a moment clock clockwise moment acting upon it so you will take the moment uh, if you take the moment clockwise as a positive uh, basically um, this moment is basically clock in clockwise direction and this is anti clockwise direction if you take the sign convention clockwise positive for example um, then you have to take the clockwise moment positive throughout so you have ml moment acting uh, which is clockwise um, you consider that the clockwise moment is positive then it goes upward uh, so you will add up the area of a shear into this moment value it will goes like uh, one degree curve if the shear is zero degree curve 
then the moment would be 1 degree curve if the shear is 1 degree curve the moment would be 2 degree curve if the shear would be 2 degree curve the moment would be 3 degree curve it totally depends upon the type of loading if it's a point load it's a it would be a 0 degree curve if it's a UDL it uh, the shear force would be the shear force would be 1 degree curve and the moment would be 2nd degree if the loading condition is UVL you know uh, uniformly varying load then you will have a 2 degree curve of shear and 3 degree curve of moment it will which would be uh, bulging uh, concave uh, uh, bulging of uh, outward or uh, inward depending upon the scenario of a shear we will discuss it later on so uh, you have covered it uh, till this point then you will add up this um, area of a shear into this moment uh, it's a positive so it adds further up to this point and you have a um, counterclockwise moment which is taken as a negative because the clockwise is positive then you have to take the counterclockwise negative so it would uh, end up as zero if you if you differentiate this value or take the slope you will have a vl value if you take the uh, this slope of this you will have a vl value if you take the slope of this um, this uh, curve one degree curve you will have a vr which basically supports our argument which we have justified in the previously um, developed equations which was if you take the derivative of a this is basically if you take the derivative of a shear you would have an intensity of load if you take the derivative of a moment you will have a shear force contrarily you will if you take the integration of a shear you would have what you would have is area under the distributive curve and if you take the integration of a V which is shear then you will get what area under the shear force diagram here uh, by the slope of this values you can take the uh, the slope must be the same in case of a moment acting upon this beam section there is three moment acting upon it it's in clockwise direction it's counterclockwise and counterclockwise clockwise we have um, for the shear force diagram there is a zero uh, there is um, uh, shear force is basically shear force is basically the resistive force which is the internal force into the beam or a frame element which resists the uh, imposed loading or imposed force of forces so there is no imposed loading or shear uh, or a, uh, imposed loading term of a point load or a udl so you have a shear force equal zero you have a moment uh, acting upon the span so uh, the moment would contribute toward the moment diagram it's a clockwise it's, it would take it taken as positive it's a counterclockwise it's taken as negative between these two it would be a zero diagram a zero degree diagram because there is no loading upon it uh, it is counterclockwise it will come down and uh, it's also a counterclockwise it will come as zero so a zero slope would be there would be um, considered because there is no loading between these two points uh, so in case of a udl you have a totally different scenario you have a vl which is taken as um, upward and you have a one degree u, uh, curve which because a udl is all upon the uh, span of a beam so it acts upon acts downward so vl would um, goes downward with a one degree uh, one degree curve linear curve so it comes with the intensity of it comes with the slope of intensity so if you divide the if you take in the slope of this value you will come up with the intensity of loading this is what we have discussed earlier so if the shear this v is going downward what v is uh, so w naught is it's the intensity of a loading so in, uh, it's coming downward then vr would add up to zero point uh, so in case of a moment you have a clockwise moment ml which is positive in direction so 
you will add up the, this po positive shear up to the value till the end of a beam so uh, it would be a second degree curve because it's a one degree curve uh, in shear in moment it would be a second degree curve so uh, it would goes like second degree curve and you have a clockwise a counterclockwise moment it will um, um, it, it will negate it up to the zero so uh, you have a shear for um, bending moment diagram like this the slope of uh, ml slope in this point would be the slope of vl and the slope of mr would be the slope of vr So same is the case with this UVL. So same is the case with UVL, but the, um, the but the shape of a shear force diagram would be change. So in case of a increasing UVL, uh, you will have a diagram like um, because it's UVL, you have a two degree curve, which is because the intensity is increasing, it's it it would like a bulging outward. So, because the intensity is increasing uh, through um, along the section, so the shear would be like uh, bulging outward and going downward, and this VR would contribute it to the point zero. In case of a uh, moment diagram, so the slope um, at point VL would be would be the negative in intensity of W one. And uh, this would be negative W2. For the moment diagram, uh, you have a moment acting upon this. So um, it's positive clockwise, uh, it is in clockwise direction. So the increasing UVL value would add up, um, uh, add up from the area of a shear diagram till the end it also will bulge outward because it's increasing and then it would go downward <coughs> likewise you have a decreasing uh, varying load um, there would only be change in the in the shape of a shear force which would be a bulging inward concave inward the shear would uh, shear force would be the same but the it, its shape would be different it would be like uh, concave inward so you can see that and the moment diagram would remain the same this is an example you can solve it by your time there's an uh, uh, there's a four resultant force acting one by third of a span and two by third from the this and hinge support and there's a reaction over here and there is uh, also a reaction you can calculate it by the sigma for y equals zero and sigma moment at any support equals zero you can calculate these forces because two and there are two unknown and there are two uh, equilibrium equation and it's a determinant structure so you can calculate this reaction very easily so shear uh, shear force would be like um, going upward with the 30 value and it's a uvl which is increasing value so the the curve would be of second degree concave outward or bulging outward so v9 is uh, so basically the external resultant force is 90 which acts throughout the uh, longitudinal section of a beam but the resultant is 90 which acts 1 by 3 at, at 1 by 3 point so what you will do is you will add the shear this uh, reaction uh, with this external resultant force not the intensity of a udl so you would add up the plus 30 and it's going downward so negative 90 it would come up as negative 60 so what would be the direction it would be a concave uh, concave outward or bulging outward because the intensity of UTL is increasing UVL is increasing so you have a reaction it will come up as zero so it's a positive and negative direction so in case of a moment uh, you would uh, have a similar moment trends as it's a hinge support there is no moment would be resisted and uh, um, over this port there is a zero moment 
and you will add up this value of moment uh, up to this unknown point what you will do is uh, there is a moment diagram of a 3 degree curve um, going upward and this is a negative uh, interaction so it will be decreasing up to zero with the 3 degree curve so what is the value of x up to the point where the shear is zero so you have to take the section over here in order to get the value of x so uh, you will uh, take the section over the v uh, v where the v equals zero shear equals zero um, there is an unknown distance x at which the v equals zero so you will take the section at x you will have an intensity um, of the uvl from a similar triangle like you what you will do is x divided by 9 20 divided by intensity so you will calculate the intensity equals to 20 into x by 9 so it's a simple then uh, what you will do is f find the value of uh, x where the shear is 0 so you will draw the um, internal uh, internal forces which is shear and moment in this case because, because it's a beam and there is no uh, long uh, no horizontal force act upon it so there is no normal force as well so v equals 0 uh, from this section coming up so the moment you have to calculate the moment um, because there is only a one unknown you will take the um, uh, you will take the sigma for y equals 0 so, so uh, you will take sigma for y equals 0 uh, what is uh, one because th this is so this is uh, a resultant of this UDL uh, due to this uh, due to the intensity 20 x by 9 multiply by x into half half into x into 20 by 9 so this is a resultant so you have a v equal 0 moment and uh, 30 uh, 30 kilonewton of force reaction force upon the support so you can calculate the um, uh, you can develop an equation and form develop an equation and determine the x value because you only have a, a one unknown which is horizontal direction <coughs> so in this case uh, the intensity of moment is still unknown you will have to take the moment at uh, a point so x is an x is um, x is zone to you so you can calculate the sigma moment at point and x equals zero and determine the value of moment at this point so it's easy you uh, you will determine the moment based on this resultant force due to the uh, uvl this reaction force and this moment you will calculate this moment at point v so m is acting counterclockwise you have uh, taken counterclockwise as a positive then this resultant force which acts 1 by 3 ta 3 of this span x which is 5.20 you will take uh, the resultant multiply by this moment arm so here is a resultant here here is a resultant and this is a moment arm and uh, this reaction multiply by vertical distance x which is 5.2 you can calculate the moment at point this at this point so it's 104 kN newton meter likewise l likewise you can determine the shear force and bending moment for these simple beams uh, I am going to left all these examples for you people to solve it at your own so I will solve this last example in which the uh, internal hinge is introduced uh, at point B so you have to draw the shear and moment diagram for a compound beam as shown in figure uh, assume the support A is fixed 
and P is roller so it has a structure indeterminacy of 1 and we have introduced a hinge to uh, to make it determinate so in case how the hinge makes the determinate uh, indeterminate structure or reduces the uh, structure indeterminacy you can see my lecture on the uh, stability and structure and in static indeterminacy of a structures uh, in the YouTube I will post the link in my in the description you can see and learn from it so uh, first what we, what we do is determine the reactions we will break uh, this beam apart we will break this beam apart in two halves so uh, determine we, we will determine the um, reaction upon this beam so we have a um, on this pan we have 8 kN load and on this uh, span we only have a 30 kN meter moment acting the property uh, one one thing I want to make you people clear that hinge only and only transfer the vertical on vertical forces or uh, forces horizontal forces hinge only transfer the forces not the moment hinge provides the releases so that the moment can be get released so there is no moment at point B um, so in this case um, you will break apart and determine the reactions uh, for the calculating the reactions so it's a fixed support it has a three reactions uh, horizontal moment and vertical horizontal is zero so you have a three reactions and these three reactions uh, because of a uh, fixed support you have a two reactions because of hinge support and this react these reactions will translate into uh, the this section also so what the value of by and bx would be it would be negate into uh, it would be transformed into the value of bx and by over here with the different directions with the opposite directions so you can calculate the uh, the reactions uh, in case uh, in case of this um, span you have a bx equals 0 because of no horizontal force acting so in case of a <coughs> only moment acting you will determine the by and cy because it's a clockwise moment there uh, we would have to make the couple of a reaction and counter clockwise direction so to negate this moment so what's the procedure to find the reaction from the moment is you have to form the couple of counterclockwise direction so that this moment can be negated so you will divide this moment with the span which comes out as uh, basically 30 divided by 15 equals 2 so your reactions would be 2 minus 2 and plus 2 minus 2 would be uh, downward direction it's upward direction the direction uh, would be you can assign the direction direction of reactions based on external moment uh, what the direction of external moment is you just uh, translate that moment in opposite direction by making the couple so um, the reactions would be as 2 and 2 uh, it's in downward direction it's upward so this reaction would be translated would be transformed into this by with upward direction um, because of a property of a hinge and there is no bx and the what the moment would be 8 into 12 which uh, would be 48 so uh, what would be the reaction uh, moment at uh, at 20 which is 8 into 12 which is cl clockwise direction and by into 24 the moment would be 8 into perpendicular distance which is 12 meter and by into perpendicular distance which is 24 meters uh, means 8 into 12 minus 2 into 24 is 50 so you come up with the value of 48 moment acting upon it then you will find the ay uh, based on uh, by and 8 value 
so you have a ay equal 6 you can now you can draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams so for the shear force diagram you have a six traction over here and so the it goes up uh, value of six there is no no force or no external force acting upon it so it would have a slope of a zero and it goes downward direction uh, and uh, likewise there is no force acting um, till the point um, c so it goes like with the zero slope with a value of negative two then it adds up to the value of zero because of this reaction so there is easy, uh, there is so simple way to calculate the shear you must have to keep in mind that i also have elaborated elaborated that the internal pin transfers the forces uh, between the span but do not transfer the moment between the span so uh, in the uh, means in shear force diagram there would be no discontinuity in case of internal hinge but in case of a moment diagram the moment should have to be zero at point b because of internal hinge so for moment diagram you have a 48 kilonewton meter of a moment acting uh, so it is in counterclockwise direction so it's taken as negative it uh, you can also uh, you will add the shear force area uh, in, in negative 48 which is 6 into 12 which translate which translate it as 72 so it would it goes like 24 value then you will minus the shear force area 2 into this is probably 27 uh, then it will goes negative uh, 30 then you have a moment acting upon it uh, it's in clockwise direction it's counterclockwise direction it would take an as zero so you can see that there is a point b uh, the value of moment is zero so for the bending diagram you must have to uh, but, uh, make it them you, have, you must have to consider that where is contraflexure so contraflexure is point where the where the moment changes where the uh, moment transform positive moment uh, just transform into the negative moment uh, so that contraflexure points is very important in structural point of view so at contraflexure point we must have not to give the laps or steel joints or steel laps at uh, contraflexure locations so in case of a continuous beam uh, the, the, there are the contraflexure points at around uh, um, you can say l by 3 of a length so you uh, must have to avoid the um, avoid the lapping the steel bars up at the contraflexure points so the bending diagram would be like and this because of a point load and because of these moments so this is uh, this is an example similar example you can take uh, you can solve it but at your own time um, likewise you can solve it um, this example uh, as well it's a determinate so inter once again the internal hinge induces uh, or reduces the structure indeterminacy I will leave this example to you people to solve it at uh, your time uh, to solve it in your time so you have a shear and moment diagram and frames so we'll discuss the also we'll also discuss the frame uh, how the shear and moment transforms into the frame so in case of frame you have a three member internal forces which is moment shear and normal or axial the, uh, normal and axial are the same so you have uh, for example this is a frame uh, it, it 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 contains a beam and column a b is a column and b c is a beam so it has a yeah, it has a fixed joint at point b so fixed joint has a property to resist all the uh, internal forces which is moment shear and normal so axial 
so um, if we draw the free body diagram of EB it would be like it's a hinge uh, it's a roller it only will resist the vertical direction uh, in case of a uh, point B it would resist the both of three uh, it would resist all of three uh, internal forces uh, and at point C it would only resist the two forces two external forces which are reactions so uh, in case of a beam uh, in case of frame frame is basically the combination of a beam and column so in this case uh, uh, for drawing the shear force or a bending moment diagram you must have consider uh, yourself uh, consider yourself into the into the intersection of a um, frame and face the beam beam section of which you are drawing the moment shear diagram then uh, you can imagine the value of a shear going negative and positive for example for a b will i will consider myself as a um, sitting over here and uh, taking this p2 as a downward and uh, reactions um, and uh, some reactions upward so for example there is a uh, ab element uh, it, it it resists the ay is normal force uh, which acts which acts upward direction and this is a p2 value so this is a p2 value uh, if you draw the shear force diagram there is no force acting between uh, this point and this point so p value would uh, make the shear force diagram into the negative value of p which is p2 and b x would make up to zero level so in case of a moment diagram uh, if we uh, consider in the left side there is no force act uh, acts between this point so it has uh, it has a moment value equal zero then you will start the moment and because uh, because the shear is negative in negative direction you will add the shear in this moment so the shear is negative the moment also uh, goes negative direction so it will goes like this and uh, moment of value of mb which is basically counterclockwise direction uh, it is basically if if we go inward direction of the frame and face the ab span then this moment would be counterclockwise and it is sagging and it is sagging the uh, this frame element you must have to keep in mind that in case of a frame element if the moment is uh, sagging the frame element uh, sagging means uh, the frame element bend like this or uh, and hogging mean frame element bend like this or frame like uh, frame element bend in upward direction concave upward in sagging it bends in concave downward direction so if the moment tends to bend the um, tend to uh, tends to bend the uh, frame element in sagging mode so you can consider uh, this moment as a positive so it is negative so it is sagging the beam so it will take as positive it will add up to the negative uh, zero value so in case of horizontal uh, member which is beam uh, these forces would be transformed into uh, this section for example bx uh, was acting in this direction leftward direction would act now rightward direction with the same magnitude but changing direction um, if the by value was acting uh, toward the joint then uh, if uh, b word di direction was uh, acting downward direction in this case it will act in upward direction so you will it will transform uh, in uh, into the beam element uh, with opposite signs or opposite direction it was a when uh, if it was a sagging 
so in case of a horizontal member in the frame which is a beam uh, we have uh, uh, these forces transfer transforming uh, into the opposite direction with the, but with the similar values so if we want to draw the shear force diagram uh, in this case then it would be like uh, by is going upward which is a positive in this case and uh, it will make the shear force uh, diagram positive with a zero slope value and it goes up to uh, the cv the cv make it at zero on the right extreme end so the shear in this case is in positive um, direction if we consider uh, if we talk about the moment mb uh, mb is basically hogging the this section of a beam so hogging moment in, uh, i have explained earlier that hogging in this case would be uh, like treated as negative but you can um, but you can define your convention by the your own so you can define second moment as a positive on hogging moment as a negative and contrarily uh, vice versa so mb is in negative direction mb add up uh, the negative value and by adding the shear force area it will comes up at zero so uh, if we want to draw the combined shear force and the bending moment diagram of this frame it would look like so i hope you have learned a lot from this video thank you so much for watching